Hello, everyone, and welcome to Choices Finding Your Joy. Paula Vale here. Oh my gosh, we are going to have some fun today. I am going to share with you uh, an amazing gentleman that I've, I've known for quite a while now with having interviewed, and, and he's fascinating. This is going to be such a great show. I have with us today David Lowe, MS, PhD. He is a former religion professor and counselor who today does dream work, substance abuse, counseling, meditation instruction, and what he calls real life problem solving. He's going to share so much information with us and insight. I, I I'm always fascinated when I talk with David. First off, David, welcome to the show. Thank you so much, Paul. It's great to be here. You are you you, you certainly rate as one as one of the most enthusiastic and and <laughs> shocky filled interviewers I know. It's always great to be with you. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you. I love it. I love it. Would you like to share uh, any of your any more? detail on your history and what brought you to what you're doing now with the dreams before we dive yeah, in? Yeah, just, just uh, the, the whole spiritual path I've been through. Um, it's really been a great opening and journey towards some kind of enlightenment or whatever. But, you know, it's been, I, I, got, I, I started out with lots of, uh, you know, I stuttered, was hyperactive and so forth growing up, was on medication, social issues and so forth. Um, did transcendental meditation, went fooled around with all these spiritual paths, got initiation from, from a major guru, which really blasted me wide open. And there's been a big dream journey, more, more so than anything else, in terms of varieties of spiritual practices. And it's something which I developed through just, by, just out of disposition, but also through study and practices and really applying myself to understanding spirituality and, and, and higher dimensions of reality, you might say. It's something which everybody can do to, to an extent, but some people are kind of cut out for it. But everybody dreams and everybody can tune in more to, to that dimension of their lives, which is what we all share. Everybody, that is the main avenue of uh, communicating with higher reality, which, which we all have access to. Yo. So, basically, how would you describe what a dream is? A dream is an experience in a different world inside yourself, separate from the external world. That's probably the best overall definition, non-biological definition, which, which are the best ones. Um, biologically, they, 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 they correspond with, with certain electrical phenomena in the brain and whatnot, most of them. But, you know, they are experiences of other realities okay within ourselves in higher dimensions usually yeah always in fact oh yeah. wow so it's basically an experience of the mind that comes yeah. to us well it, it, it a dream is an experience of information received from higher psychic faculties taking place in higher dimension you could say you know think about your mental faculties the non-material mental factors we all have pervade higher dimensions everywhere. Think of it that way, fourth, fifth, sixth dimension, especially fifth dimension. Um, so we have fields, as it were, projecting out beyond our physical minds, in our brains, beyond our physical brains, which pervade everywhere, which are always picking up signals in terms of our potentially better, easy spiritual paths in life toward greater possible happiness. So dreams basically pick up that information and present it to us symbolically. So they are experiences of higher reality. And most of the time, for most people, they reflect things in ordinary reality, but using the medium of higher reality. But reflecting things which don't have that much interest or non-worldly content, because most people have relatively little interest in higher spiritual realms in greater levels of happiness. So that's why most people's dreams are fairly humdrum, but they're taking place in the medium of higher dimensions. Wow. Now, why is it that some of us remember our dreams a lot and some of us don't? I know I don't remember dreams that often. When I do, it's really vivid, 
but I, I don't remember dreams every night. Right, yeah. right. You know, there is no answer to that question. I mean, part of it is, is like pure and plain karma. Everybody can, to an extent, improve their frequency of memory by taking a greater interest in their spirituality, doing their meditation, doing induction techniques that like, asking sincerely for guidance. You can increase the likelihood that you will remember your dreams. But there's no answer to the question why we don't always remember them every night, because everybody dreams every night. That's been known. That's been established for decades. So, I mean, that's an amazing fact that some of us don't remember them that much, but we can all do something to increase the frequency, the frequency in which we do remember them. Yeah. yeah. So what is dream work? Is that working with others to do more with their dream and get the information? Dream work is simply the art of understanding what a dream is trying to tell us and mm -hmm. what, and what a dream offers us by way of emotional integration and breakthroughs. Um, I mean, everybody wants to know what, what these things are telling us. Yes. Um, they come to us in code, as it were. You know, we don't get these things free. If we're going to, uh, you know, God doesn't spoon feed us information for nothing. We need to do our part by taking an interest and doing practices and trying to fathom them, mainly through discussions with other people. You can't do it on your own, but it's going to be more difficult. You need to work with other people. Usually, pretty informally, but you can do it in relatively informal facilitated settings, dream circles, dream groups, and of course with therapists or informally with a good friend who can, who you can talk to and who has some sense of what, what dream works about. Yeah. Yeah. So we can learn to identify with what our dreams, what messages they're trying to tell us. Oh yes, absolutely. It's not important that you get it right every time. Um, you won't. But the important thing is that dialogue with higher reality, okay? You write them down, you puzzle over what the heck they're trying to tell you, and then you write stuff, and then you write questions back to God's self, as I like to call it, back to the dream source, and you will start getting more and more, as it were, accurate, a more and more understandable replies. Oh my God. Uh, I mean, uh, on its own time, of course, but you will start getting information, which is gonna be a little bit easier to fathom simply because you're interested. It's like you're putting God on notice that you're interested. Yeah. Get yourself a book about dreams, do your meditation more often or regularly, be more serious about the whole spiritual path. Mm -hmm. And you know, and you will that you will start getting more stuff. And if you work with it, I mean, ideally go you go to your symbolism dictionaries and so forth, which are only so useful. Um, but you work with it and put time. It does take time. That's the thing. You can spend piece, a person has 10 minutes a day to work in their dreams, write down three or four bullet points, um, spend a few minutes just trying to fathom what they're saying, and then express your frustrations back to the dream source in your journal. That is sufficient for most folks, and that will do the trick. If you're really into dream work, it's gonna take, there's no question, you really have to write them down, work with other people, and fathom their more um, detailed things that they're trying to tell you. That can be very rewarding. David, this and is very, really and exciting. And very, very important. It's, it's amazing how often they're trying to tell you some very important things. Oh my gosh. I mean, if you ignore your dreams, your life will probably turn out okay, like most people's lives do in the normal course of events, right? But there always exists potential for greater happiness and fulfillment for all of us. And dreams show us that. They give us the direction and the guidance of things we can do to get there more quickly than we otherwise would have. Yeah, I know myself, I've, you know, I'll have a dream and it's really vivid and gosh, what did that say to me? I don't know. And then I let it go. I don't right. think about it anymore. I just accept that I don't know. But we can really work with that to get more answers and more understanding. Yeah, and I mean, for some people, uh, like yourself probably, you know, they're relatively, it's not that crucial that you fathom your dreams because you're already pretty happy and fulfilled, but you could be knowing something more about this or that interview or fathoming more completely something that you're, that you're curious about. But it's not going to make a difference if you don't. But for many of us struggling with issues and, you know, in real life, we can get crucial guidance that we're all too often ignoring. Yeah. 
Yeah. That guidance is always there, especially in the case of you know, repetitive dreams or nightmares, which are very important to try to fathom. I mean, they're long-term issues, if it's, you know, where God's not going to say, hey, wake up, stupid, do something about <laughs> it, right? And, but it takes, it does take time and interest. And yeah. it's a matter of that, that's a matter of discipline to, to, uh, to take that interest for many of us. And that is just so exciting that we can tap into that and, and do the work. All of us. And oh my gosh, what we could learn and be given in information. That's well, you know, it's, it's interesting how, you know, in psychology, in the history of psychology and psychiatry, dreams came down through us through Sigmund Freud and Carl Jung and so forth, associated with psychoanalysis. But um, it's broken out. Dreams are thought to be by some folks in, in, in the therapeutic community on the cutting edge insofar as they're not usually the, a, a presenting symptom for someone coming into therapy, but they often come into play later on. Um, and they are underutilized as therapeutic tools. That's for sure. So more and more people are getting training in dream work slowly but surely, and it, it is slowly becoming more prominent as a psychological methodology and therapy. And, and there are all kinds of ways of working with them, but um, yeah, it, it is becoming more important slowly but surely to our benefit. Now, would you say that dreams can affect us emotionally? I mean, you can have a dream and it's like, oh, that was the best dream. That was so great when you wake up or, oh my gosh, that was a nightmare. That scared me to death. Yeah, dreams can be very, very upsetting. Yeah. But quite often, what, what, what seems to be upsetting is actually good news. Or, I mean, well, <clears throat> they always, something which is upsetting is going to be the greatest potential for advancement to greater happiness that can be offered to you because you're, be, you're being told about and notified about something which really needs to be addressed in your life. And the reason you're being, so, the reason you're getting so upset is because, you know, dreams are unpleasant only to get your attention. That's the only reason. Okay. okay. And it, it may be important and may be a difficult issue to work through, but you need to pay attention to that issue. And they're letting you know in a very unmistakable way. So the actual content of the dream may be, may be very different from the message which they're trying to give you, but at least you're starting to pay attention. Yeah. And that's, that, that's the thing to bear in mind. Yes. And then you go get help with what the heck it means, or you take your greater interest in trying to fathom the stupid thing. Yes. And you will, you will, um, it will be of great benefit to you to do so. So with your dream work, do you work with individuals and in helping them work through what a dream might mean and how they may progress from that? Yes, absolutely. Um, what's interesting is, and this is something which some therapists are better at than others, I'm slowly learning it. I'm very good with the cognitive element of dream work, which is important. The, most, the more important, deeper element that dreams communicate is purely emotional. Okay, we have feeling issues connected with deep attachments, connected with patterns of thinking and conditioning that, we're, that most of us are subject to, which confine us, keep us less happy than we could be. The most important element of a dream is the, uh, the potential it offers you to work through those issues. As emotional issues and problems and things which keep us confined, the fears around that, are portrayed symbolically. And you can work with them more directly. You embody the dream by acting it out. This is something which you can begin to do in like a normal dream circle. You begin to feel the issues and the tears come up and so forth on occasion. Um, but you can do it more directly and intensely in therapeutic settings with certain people who are very good at doing this. I'm learning it. I'm getting better at it. I'm primarily good with the cognitive discursive, which can be powerful, believe me. But the more therapeutic dimensions, you work with people, it's more expensive, time consuming and so forth, but you work with people and they help you actually enact the dream and recreate the issues and the issues come out more effectively in those settings. Yeah, <clears throat> that is so exciting. Um, are there any examples of dreams or anything you've, you've seen or, or felt over the years that might give us a little 
Well, the old, you know, there are there, there are zillions, of course, dream, dream, dreams are symbolic, and any really interesting dream, which which has some complexity to it, would take forever to talk about online yeah. uh, on the air, unless we were to, unless we were to devote an entire interview to to um to unpacking a particular dream, yeah. which 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 might be fun to do sometime, but um. For the most part, what I can talk about is more literal dreams, which tell you stuff directly. The greater interest you take in spirituality, the more likely you are to get literal elements in your dreams. Mm -hmm. So God wants to be sure to, God wants to be sure that you really get it, you know, that you really understand, because you deserve to understand the answer to something that you're really working hard on. So there have been times in my life when I've gotten direction about paying a bill that I had forgotten all about which would have destroyed my credit rating. Like, this was like two decades ago. Or one time I had a dream about a, a problem with my car, about a tire that was about to blow out. And if I hadn't have fixed that tire, I would have gone right on the highway, and boom, gotten in this, um, the dream portrayed that as a really serious accident. If I didn't do something, it said, go check your car, stupid. That's so was the dream you having a car accident? No, it was, it was, the dream was saying, you know, you need to check something about your car. Go look at it right now. Um, and then it was like, but, 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 but before that voice happened in my head, there was a there was a scene of a car accident with me in a car accident. And then a message saying, check it now. So I went and looked at my car and I found this, I found, I, I found a bulge in my tire that was about to blow up. I would have had a flat tire, I mean, a blowout, literally, on the highway, and who knows what would have happened. Yeah. So, I mean, events like that, stay away from this person, she's not for you, wow. you know, that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, the most, single most important dream I had was um, very unspectacular, straightforward, two seconds long, it was an audio dream, no scenery involved whatsoever. I was thinking of getting involved with a certain woman. This is like 25 years ago, mm -hmm. and thir more than that, about 30 years ago. And um, I had a dream saying, I was going to call her. I'm going to go for it after all. So I got a dream in which I, there, were, I, there were two things, that woman nagging and a baby squalling. That told me everything. Stay away. You're not ready to be a father. She's not the right one for you. Mm -hmm. And so that... If I hadn't have heeded that dream, my life would probably be very different. Probably not in a good way. Wow. So yeah, it's it, it, it's interesting what they can. So I mean, the more you get involved in your meditation and spirituality, the more you will start to get literal or close to more literal, easy to understand messages. Yeah. Um, and that will start to happen if you get that dialogue going. Yeah. You, you got to get that dialogue going. Yeah. We really we just have to say yes. And then open up that dialogue and open up, okay, this is a message. I'd like to know what it is. All of this, David, is so fascinating. I just love it. <laughs> it's, it's, it's dream, dreams are really, really a universal phenomenon that we can all yeah. take advantage of more, more and more than we usually do. I, yeah. yeah, and really, I was thinking earlier, we really don't, give them that much attention, do we, that we could think of? Yeah. You know, that yeah. We really could. I, I would love you to take a moment to share with everyone your website information, how they can learn more about you, David. So, yeah, it's David Lowe, no E on the name, David Lowe, MS as in Masters of Science, David Lowe, MSPhD.com. And the email is david at worldspirituality.com. I love it. Yeah, it'd be, it'd be great to hear from people. If you're if you're interested in uh, working with your dreams, I'm 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 here for you. Awesome, awesome. And I would love you to share um, an example or share how dreams pick up through information through time and space. How does that happen? Yeah, we. Uh, I think we have talked about this before, but we can we can try um, a different angle of it. So you can think of dreams as simply being part of, as, as human beings, we all have access to the source of reality, to God, to, you know, that's who we are. And the journey of life is to get back to that. So part of who we are is to always have access with our own, uh, you know, 
inherent psychic faculties. Some people have special gifts like clairvoyance or whatever, but we all dream. We all have these inherent faculties that are always in touch with the higher dimensions, way beneath the radar, way beneath conscious, subconscious. And at nighttime, which is when our bodies sleep, you know, our dream bodies, our, our higher aspect has its own cycle of activity, just like our physical body does. So it's natural that we're out there always looking, sort of scanning higher reality, being who we are in a more expansive spiritual sense at nighttime. That's just part of what we do. As much as we walk around during the day, do everything else, we also do that at night during part of the time. So yeah, we have these faculties and they're always, each of us has like a field, if you will. Each of our higher each of our higher dimensional realities pervades the rest of the universe because that's ultimately who we are. So we're always scanning, looking for ways to be more happy, more easily, to go through life in a way which, is, uh, which takes us to greater levels of happiness and fulfillment more quickly than we otherwise would. That information is always on offer through dreams. We just have to pay attention to it. Um, and they do come to us symbolically. We, we don't get something for nothing. Um, that's part of the game of life. You know, we get information from God. So if we want to take advantage of it, we need to work at it, to study, to fathom, to contemplate, and to work with other people to try to <clears throat> understand what it's telling us. So they're part of who we are, and they automatically pick up information that can be useful to us. Yeah. That is so amazing. I think pr 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 probably the best way to understand it that people can most relate to is through the notion of higher dimensions. Three-dimensional reality, our mental psychic faculty, which is not connected materially with the brain, um, is in higher dimensions, fourth dimension, fifth dimension, and so forth. I mean, that, that is a quote-unquote scientific way of understanding it. So in quantum physics and so forth, string theory and whatnot, all that involves notions of higher reality or more subtle realities than the ones we immediately experience. And that involves, you know, dimensional, dim, dimensional, and dimensional uh, elements of existence beyond the usual three dimensions. And those realms do exist. And part of who we are is always in touch with it. That's what dreams portray for us. <clears throat> it, yeah. it really is fascinating to think. The information we get, yeah, so the, the information we get may be very mundane because that's what our interests are, most of us. But the medium through which that information comes involves the higher dimensions and the higher perceptions that we're always looking at. Yeah. When we... As we go into the last few minutes of the show, David, what, what words would you like to share to everyone today to maybe just really put out what, what I'm seeing as how fantastic this is and expansive what we can do with our dreams, with your dream work. Yeah, sure. You can, you can do your own dream work by getting a journal, start writing stuff down, and that dialogue that I talked about before is the most important thing. Always be writing down even bullet points if you don't have time and always be trying to contemplate what they're saying and then express real curiosity about what you should do next. If, if, if you have a meditation practice, you're writing them down and you're thinking, you're trying to fathom what's going on in your life, you have that dialogue going. And it can be a matter of discipline for most people to start to do those things. I mean, it's there. It's there for us to take advantage of. So, yeah, I mean, dream work, folks like myself, or, you know, even if people not facilitated by a professional or by someone who's trained to do this, you can do dream circles, dream groups on your own. There are pro protocols for doing that, even, for, even if there's no one to lead the session. Okay, so and working with others is more important than working with, I mean, five other people who know nothing about dreams in a well-facilitated dream circle will help you more than the best individual professional can. But we are here too. So I can, I mean, sometimes the general rule is in group settings, you never, 
you don't intrude upon the meaning of the dream for the dreamer. Only, dream, only, only the dreamer knows what his or her dream means. And the dreamer needs to be protected. You don't ever portray or intrude upon that person's own sense of meaning. I mean, sometimes a person's way off at the beginning. But once he tunes into the deeper symbolic elements from other people, then you will, only the individual dreamer can really know precisely what it means. Because only he or she has his own memories, sentiments, and so forth. As, an, um, as a dream worker, sometimes I will go further than that with the person's permission. I, I'll, you know, once I have the dream and there are life circumstances, you put those two together and I go through sort of a analytical, intuitive process and things just start coming to me. And then boom, boom, boom. They usually correspond with things going on in the person's life. So I can help folks individually. And I do facilitate dream, work, dream circles here in Philadelphia. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's fun. <laughs> Fantastic. It's I fun. love it. I love it. And we are about out of time. But oh my gosh, everyone, look for David's second show. We are going to be doing a, a second show because there's a lot more to share. So please watch for that. And David, I just have to say thank you so much. This is so fantastic and so fun. It's always a joy to be with you, Paula, above and beyond all of the hosts I work with. You oh. are spectacular, star-studded. Oh, all right, take care, David. I love you. Love, hugs, um, and blessings, everyone. David, thank you. Chat, chat later. Bye. Chat later.